Alrighty, everybody. Welcome to 2020. Big Boy Sports is here to break down the New Year's Day Bowls, everybody. And we are here, ready to go. You know, it's a great, great time, you know, and everything like that. And um, let's just start with the Sugar Bowl. It's currently on right now. Um, it's about to be over soon. So um, Georgia basically dominated this game. And as far as I know, um, I don't think Baylor's going to score 12 points in like a minute and a half. So, uh, yeah, um, Georgia dominated this game for the most part. They had 15 players, including DeAndre Swift, out for various reasons, either injuries, NFL draft, academics, whatever. But Georgia just came in to New Orleans and just dominated this game. Um, and it. Charlie Brewer, on the other hand, he his career may be over. He got another light hit. Uh, got probably has another concussion. His career is probably over. Um, it, 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 it it did not look good at all. I don't even like they like the announcers were all over that, salivating over that play for a good five minutes. Uh, uh, when I really didn't notice it, because, I mean, uh, to be completely honest with you, the Sugar Bowl was kind of boring this year. Um, really, there should have been, like, a, you know, a couple of other games alongside it. You know, maybe put the uh, maybe put the Cotton Bowl alongside it, please. ESP really just needs to start scheduling better. These games are supposed to be on New Year's. This is New Year's Day. This is the holy day of college football. There shouldn't be just four games on. You have... you. Hell, use ABC. Please use ABC. ABC ain't doing nothing. They're not doing anything on this day. So, uh, like they did with the Citrus Bowl. They should have been using. You, Disney has all the money, so they should be using you know their properties better than that. But I'm not going to complain anymore about that. Let's talk about the Citrus and the Outback Bowls right now. Um, the Citrus Bowl featured Alabama taking on Michigan. And... It was a close game for a long while. You know, Michigan and Alabama were trading blows, but ultimately at the very end of it all, uh, Alabama just steamrolled Michigan's defense, just steamrolled them for a couple of drives, especially that last drive when Michigan just could not get off the field at all. And Saban was like, yo, yo, we're not going to go out with just a 12-point victory. We're going to go out with a 19-point dominant victory. And they went 35-16. to 16. Jim Harbaugh, he... he it looks like next year, um, it, it 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 looks like it's either now or never next year for Jim Harbaugh. Now Alabama, Alabama may be back, but the most important thing that comes out of the Citrus Bowl is, hey, Tua, January 6th, seems like he may be going to the NFL. He might stay, but then again, you know, it's a little reward of staying at Alabama for another year. Yeah, he kind of needs to work on some things, I think, in my personal opinion. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is for, you know, the for the for the Tide and everything like that. They'll be reloading for next year and everything like that. You know Nick Saban's going to come prepared. They got USC next year. They got Georgia early next year. So, you know, and, and for Michigan, on the other hand, you know, um, they need, they just need to you know get over the hump if, if they want to you know be respected and everything like that. Now on the other side, at playing at the exact same time was the Outback Bowl, a highly entertaining game, very very fun. Auburn and Minnesota, congrats to Minnesota on an eleven win season, first time in over a hundred years that Minnesota has over ten has over eleven wins. Period. You know, they, they beat Auburn 31-24. So amazing catches once again by Minnesota receivers in this game. And, you know, Gus Malzahn, <laughs> you know, this guy, he can he can be he can beat he can beat Alabama. But you know, when when it, when it comes to like a big bowl game or something like that, or you know, a other big game that is in Alabama. Sometimes, you know, he really doesn't show up. His team, you know, was just outplayed in this game. Man, but it was a back-and-forth battle for 
for the entirety of that game. That was a fun, fun game right there, man. Let me tell you. Um, and the other game that was very fun today was the Rose Bowl, baby. The granddaddy of them all. Also, there should have been a game alongside the Rose Bowl. It's just to be clear, you know, just put the Orange Bowl alongside it. You could have put the Orange Bowl alongside it um, if it wasn't a playoff game, you know. You could have did that instead of having to space these games out over like three days. Uh, but, you know, ESPN, again, uh, I'm not going to complain about it too much. Um, but Oregon and Wisconsin, there was a lot of turnovers in this game, to be completely honest with you. Um, multiple fumbles, multiple interceptions. Um, Jonathan Taylor getting stuffed for most of the game. He did go over 2,000 yards for the season, though. Jack Cohn did well enough. Um, but the real story was Justin Herbert. I think the I think it was, you know, Amazing to see this guy, you know, just do what he did in in this game. He had three rushing touchdowns. Um, yeah, there was a bad penalty at the very end, but ultimately, it really, it really didn't really matter all that much to be completely honest. Because Wisconsin had them on a third down, and they didn't even come close to stopping them on that third down, which allowed Oregon to just run out the rest of the clock. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, Rose Bowl, Oregon 28, Wisconsin 27. Um, good year for Oregon. Sucks that it had to, you know, be derailed by losing to Auburn in the opener and then, you know, losing to Arizona State and Herm Edwards, you know, at the tail end of November. But beating Utah like that and, you know, getting a statement win against Wisconsin is a good consolation. Do not be mad at Oregon. Do not be mad. You've got a lot next year. You have North Dakota State next year. You have Ohio State next year. It's going to be crazy, man. I am so excited to see what the Oregon Ducks can do next year without Justin Herbert. What can they do? Who are they going to bring in? Um, and for Wisconsin, you know, Jonathan Taylor, he's probably gone, to be completely honest with you. Um, Jack Cohn may still be around. I don't know. Um, but, you know, Wisconsin's a team that will just reload with big boys and stuff like that for the Midwest. And they'll be they'll be back, to, you know, having another 10 win season probably next year. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? We don't know. Um, but, yeah. Um, so that's pretty much it um, from here. This is going to be the last time that I talk about, you know, um, and it seems that uh, Georgia has completely, um, yeah, Georgia won Sugar Bowl 26-14, so there you go, as it stands. Um, yeah, um, yeah, that was New Year's Day in a nutshell. Um, what a way to open 2020. Yeah, there were a couple of duds, but the two games that were very entertaining were very entertaining. Um, you know, and I am so excited. I'm ready for the national championship. Are you ready? Because I am definitely ready. Um, man, and th this will be it for my, aside for the national championship, this will be it. Uh, oh, and the SES national championship as well. I will do a recap of that before the playoffs, uh, for the divisional playoffs on that day as well. But this will be it for my FBS coverage of, you know, college football and stuff like that for this year. We'll be back week zero next year, everybody. Um, so, you know, get ready to, for more of these videos like this um, in August once, you know, stuff comes around and things like that. Um, still going to keep the videos going on circulating, mostly, you know, college basketball type stuff. Maybe a little bit of XFL, maybe a little bit of um, uh, NBA. I really don't watch the NBA anymore, to be completely honest with you. Um, I do try and keep a little update on the indoor leagues, the indoor football league and the National Arena League, and maybe the CIF and AAL, since arena football is dead. The yeah, arena football league is dead. Um, but don't really expect videos on those at all, you know, but, you know. Um, yeah, 
So this is basically, you know, the channel for the channel is probably going to, you know, have a lot less videos over the coming months. But, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, just got to keep growing, keep spreading, you know, the conversation out there. We got to talk about these games, man. Um, uh, I know there's other popular YouTubers that, you know, talk about these games plenty and stuff like that. I'm not a betting man, so I don't do any betting or anything like that. I don't have the flashy graphics and stuff like that. Uh, really don't have time to do the flashy graphics, but um, this is all one take. And um, if you like that it's all one take, if you like my analysis and just me kind of recapping what in the world happened to these games, um, just go ahead and click that subscribe button and, you know, turn on the notification bell. And, um, yeah. Um, I'm gonna do a channel trailer too tonight, so y'all, y'all get ready. So this is it. This is it. Glad to be here once again for the first day of 2020. I'm ready. Y'all take care. Peace.